Hello, this is Adam with another Squarespace tutorial. Uh, this one's on how to add images, uh, galleries, videos, um, anything visual to your site. Uh, so we'll go into the same template I was using before, the Alex template. Um, click in your Add a Page uh, section to get into your editor. Uh, whatever page you want to edit, I've tossed some images in here. Um, for the next quick tutorial, I'm going to do on the magic of the spacer bar. But we can add uh, another one from now. So you get the add black line to add images where you want. One thing to notice, I can't add, if I wanted this image in a second column, since I only have one column right now, I can only add an image to that one column. I can't try and go over here and add like a vertical line or anything. Um, I can only add to this one column, and then I'd have to drag it up to get the second. Um, so just in case you're wondering why, like, why can't I go halfway? Uh, that's why. So we'll add a basic image to start. You can get your images from Getty Images, um, which is quite nice. That's a new partnership, I think, that Squarespace has. Um, you can add a caption below. You can add a caption that overlays your photo, so it won't be below the photo. It'll be on a black transparent bar right here or a caption overlay on hover. When I do do a caption, that's usually the one I use. That way people don't see it all the time. And everybody's kind of used to mousing over images now um, because usually they're links or have animations or something else. Uh, but for now, let's choose an image to add. So tutorial. I'll just add some stock photo that I have here. And I think we will put a caption overlay on hover. One thing that might throw you off is there's no place to add your caption right here. Um, that's something that you do in just a second. Um, just so you know, you can choose where your image is, has a focal point if you choose to crop it. Um, this is helpful, and I will show you how to crop after I add this image. So I'll leave that for center right now. You can edit your image. Um, so it's kind of got a... Photoshop-y wannabe um, image editor. You can adjust brightness, contrast, sharpen um, if it's a bit blurry, although this one is meant to be blurry because it's a focal point uh, image. You can change rotation, crop, resize, um, add some filters, saturation, things like that. Uh, add a weird picture frame. Um, I highly suggest if you have the knowledge in the program, do your editing in Lightroom or Photoshop or you know something professional. But if you're uh, if you're just uh, a beginner and not a designer background like um, I have, when you wouldn't have all those programs, this will definitely help you a little bit. To and actually, one thing it's really good at is removing the red eye. Um, so it's not super bad, but there are better options out there. Um, Anyways, you put your image. Stretch is something that I usually put on. So if this image, like these logos for instance, if I hit stretch, they would stretch the entire width of this image. So they'd get vertically bigger as well. It stretches by aspect ratio. Um, this image is 1800 pixels. So it's already going to stretch across the entire thousand pixel width, um, thousand pixel width of my site. Um, but if I resize the block, this will keep the aspect ratio so that the the image always fills the entire block. So it's pretty much a good thing to have on there, and then you can adjust where the crop is. That way, you're not going to have some weird white space on the side, especially if you have a vertical image in a horizontal block. It'll center it like these images here. Um, notice the image is only this wide, but it's centered in an entire width block. Um, so it's there's times to use it and times to not, I guess. Like I wouldn't want this to fill the entire block, so I wouldn't stretch a small image like this. But if you're dealing with larger images, which Squarespace will automatically... Um, make this image responsive it will automatically optimize it um, down to 72 pixels from whatever it is and it'll choose the best options for the layout so I generally pick images um, around 1800 pixels or resize them to around 1800 pixels like putting a 4000 pixel image straight off of your high quality digital camera or your phone into here you're just wasting space 
um, which is going to make your site go a little slower because it's only going to fit a thousand pixels wide or two thousand pixels wide at the most on a large um, large screen if you have a full width site. So anything over that um, is kind of a loss, but any really small images it will also resize up to fill the entire block um, so that's things to keep in note I guess what I'm saying is use larger images rather than smaller images um, because it's just gonna make things easier on you and you will have sharp images um, and it's always better to go down in size rather than up because your images will get blurry one thing um, I will I'll finish this and then I, I'll Got a quick plug for a site that I use often to take my small images. If I don't have a large one, you can enhance it. Um, it's a free site, and I'll show you that really quick. Um, it's a useful tool. Lightbox. I usually click this if I have a large image that I'm going to put in a small box in a small spot on the site, and I want somebody to be able to click on it, and it'll talk, uh, come up in you know one of those faded pop-up like lightbox. Um, Fancy box, there's a ton of different names for them now. Um, things. Notice I can't have Lightbox and a click through URL. This turns your image into a link. And it works just like the text links that I showed you before. So you can link to other content on your site, you can link to files um, by uploading them. So if I wanted this to be a thumbnail for a PDF or something like that. Or you can link to external. Um, you can always choose open in a new window, which I do for files and external, but not for content. I'm not going to have this be a link right now because um, I want to show you the light box. But links will override a light box because you can't click on something and then have it click through a URL. What you would do probably in that case is have the URL be part of your caption, which I will actually do on this one. So let's save this huge big image and here's where we can add our caption and we've got some basic stylers um, there is a caption style in your design and style editor so you can edit what this looks like um, but you can choose to link it remove the formatting remove the formatting is handy if you're copying and pasting things from something like a word document you're always going to want to remove the formatting because any formatting will carry with so if you're wondering why your text looks funny like you copy and paste you write some text in Squarespace like this and then you copy and paste from a Word document and it's all of a sudden bigger even though both of the styles say normal um, generally rule of thumb anything I copy and paste in I automatically highlight remove formatting so I'm starting from scratch and I'm only adding Squarespace styles um, just something to be aware of so let's make this into a link window and then I don't want this image to be this huge but I don't really I want these in a single column so how do I get this into another column and leave these in a single um, and for that I'm going to add our magic spacer bar and I drag this I'm gonna go up and show you notice I do not want it where that black line is going to stretch the entire width past these images because that's going to kick everything into another column so if I hover my mouse over on this image somewhere around here it's going to finally detect that hey that black line should only go the height of the image it's going to go a little bit past because there's 20 pixels of white space padding this image um, but I only want it to go there so that it clicks this large image and automatically makes it responsive into a smaller one. Now if I wanted to center this image at this size in this I'd have to add another spacer. Put it on this side and then adjust them so that it's centered at that size. Or you know I could kick it part way over like that so the spacer bars basically help you make things smaller and maneuver them around um, rather than just having them full width or you know adjusting columns and things like that 
So let's save this and I'll show you a couple things on how it looks. Update this here. All right, so we've got all of our logos in there. Oh, and there's our image. Notice how the caption, since I went on hover, it only shows up when I hover on it. And I've got a little link um, glove right there, so we'll click on that. And that's our light box. So it comes up, still link caption when you hover. If I click on it, it's going to open Google in a new window. Fantastic. Cover that and we're back. And that's basically it for images. Um, video and galleries kind of behave the same way. I'm going to add a quick gallery down here. So gallery, you can choose whether you want it to be a slideshow with or without thumbnails underneath. A carousel um, shows like half an image off to the side, your main image, another half an image. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of it. Stacked basically just stacks a bunch of images one on top of another. There's not really any, like it doesn't keep one here and then you scroll and you get another one within that box. It simply stacks them all which to me seems kind of useless. I usually like the grid. That way you can see all of your images. If you click on one, it automatically goes into a light box. So let's upload some images real quick. And notice you can highlight as many as you want. Upload them. It'll toss them all in there. You can uh, arrange them by dragging and maneuvering them around. So that'll reorder them in your gallery. We do have some options so you can edit your image, adding a title and description. Oops. There we go. You can add a URL to it, but we're not going to do that right now. You click on the pencil, you get your same image editor that you had for images. Trash would just delete just this one image. Um, if you hit remove, it's going to delete the whole gallery. And something important for a grid gallery is you go to design, and you can change what this gallery is going to look like from here as well. Um, I like to crop my images into squares so that all my thumbnails are the same, because often all of your images aren't the same size. So I always crop them into squares so that I get a neat looking gallery. Um, you can choose how many thumbnails you have per row. So if I wanted only two thumbnails per row in this area, it would automatically crop it down. I can't choose more since I only have four. Well, I can, but it's not really going to do anything. Um, padding is how much space you have around your images. So that's also going to adjust the size of that. And lightbox means that if I click on one of these, the whole slideshow will pop up into a lightbox. So that's usually my, kind of my standard thing. Crop your images, hit them in a lightbox. If you wanted to go slideshow, um, you can choose automatically transition between your slides, choose how many seconds, show next and previous. Um, is going to have your next and previous arrows up there. We don't want to automatically crop on this. Notice here's our thumbnails down below. You can show those or not show those. You can choose how tall you want that thumbnail strip to be, which will automatically resize them, but keep their aspect ratios. You can choose difference between the thumbnail strip and the height. Um, of the thumbnail thing, one thing that you can't choose is to add white space in between these thumbnails. You would have to do that using custom CSS. Show title and description is going to show the title and description on the slides in the light box. Um, so you can choose where that's going to be and if you're going to want to have it just on hover or not. And then um, or actually not in the light box, sorry, that'll that'll show up here. Um, your title and description not in the light box for that. So, But I'm going to go back to the grid because that's what I like. And that way we can show how it looks in the light box. Um, there we go. Stacked. Come back, see what it looks like. And there's our gallery. If we click on one of them, we got there. We can navigate through the gallery here. 
and I think one of these I had title and description on. There we go. Yep, so title and description are both, notice they're formatted different fonts. You can adjust um, what that looks like in the style editor. And that's pretty much it for gallery. Um, as far as video, it's really close to the same thing. So hit edit, we'll add some video real quick. Uh, video URL, notice this, you can only paste something that's online. Um, so it would need to be a YouTube, a video, um, something like that. Uh, this is the tutorial. I'll use one of my old tutorials. Um, it, it's unfortunate that you can't upload a video. Like if you have a video on your computer, you can't just, you know, choose to upload it here. Uh, I think they do that because they don't want to have it chew up space on their hoster, so they'd rather pull it from somebody else's. But what you can do is just add yours to YouTube or Vimeo and then pull it in from there. Um, if you wanted a custom image thumbnail, this will automatically pull whatever thumbnail YouTube uses for it. Notice that's it right there. If you wanted to add a custom image thumbnail, uh, just do this thing right here. Once it adds it in there, I can choose, yep, I want to use that for my image thumbnail, or no, I don't. If you do choose it, notice that you can adjust the cropping. And here is, actually, I should have showed you this on the grid, too. So notice how it crops this guy down. Um, and, oops. Well, let's get this guy out of the way. So notice how these guys here, it crops into that pen. You can adjust that cropping focus just like I'm doing on the Bucharest one here. Um, since this fills horizontally, I can't crop left to right, but since it doesn't fill top to bottom or it overextends top to bottom, I can crop that way. Um, you can choose to display a caption or not display a caption and it'll automatically pick the caption from whatever's on YouTube or Vimeo or you can rewrite it yourself down here. Uh, and that's pretty much it. Then you've got your video block in there. And when you hit play, it'll start playing automatically embedded into your site. And people can uh, click full screen tutorial. or, you know, whatever they want for that. And that's how you do images galleries and video um, in the next one notice how hey this is kind of weird because I got a bunch of white space above these and these aren't lining up and you know I want to rearrange them so I'll show you the magic of the spacer bar in the next tutorial which is really handy for maneuvering around a large set of images or images and text and getting things to be in two columns in one spot then not in two columns then you know it's a, it's a really, really useful tool. So hang in for my next tutorial on the magic of the spacer bar. Thank you.